the New Hampshire poll out, Newt Gingrich basically tied with Mitt Romney. In the last debate, Newt talked about Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae. They were the problems. But then he got about $300,000 uh, in consulting fees. Then we come to find out it's almost $2 million. I think Newt's going to have a serious credibility problem attacking the housing crisis when he was one of the reasons why we couldn't stop those yeah. two companies. He says he was a historian. Isn't that what he well, called himself? Well, it's interesting because he's in a rhetorical <laughs> bind right here because he says that he's not a registered lobbyist, which legally and ethically he is not. However, but we know the game. How, right? However, however, right. in order to skate around that or skirt around that, he offers strategic advice, yep. which is almost the same exact thing exactly. for lobbying, except he does not obviously pick up the phone and say, Congressman such and such vote for this. But here's the, the problem, problem you don't have to. Yep. Because right. they right. hire right. Democrats right. and Republicans right. Right. and you know they're right. on the payroll. Right. Right. So right. you go, Right. Okay, gotcha. Right. And, and let's remember, he's the former Speaker of the House. So, you know, he's splitting hairs here. He needs to be very, very careful because in many ways he's branded as a straight shooter. He's branded as someone that's a strategic thinker. However, and especially in New Hampshire, which they're very bright uh, voters up there, if in fact he walks down this road, he's going to hang himself. He's got some problems. He got some serious problems. Speaking of problems, this whole scandal at Penn State, uh, these allegations of sexual molestation, Penn State not doing anything. Uh, and what's amazing with this story is that you'll, you see people uh, who are coming to rush to judgment. A lot of people have been emailing me, tweeting me, saying the kids involved were black. The New York Times reports that a lot of the kids were young white kids. Exactly why is the race issue somehow driving a lot of the conversation in this? I think that the race issue is what got the black community most interested because when you re read the reports, there were a lot of, there was a lot of that code language, you know, at-risk youth, uh, yeah, underprivileged youth, things that a lot of people... black folks don't realize is poor white people in Pennsylvania. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> that, that is true. Wow. But, you know, also uh, one of the uh, the mother, the mother, one of the victims, allegedly spoke to a, a, media, a media outlet, I don't even like to mention media takeout, and said that this coach has this fetish for uh, thin, wiry, strong young black males. But see, uh, so but that's see, what led me to take out as a joke. So I, I give them no credibility. Right. But what's amazing to me again though with this story is that people are kind of like, oh my God, these are black victims and I'm going we don't know that. I don't think it should matter what color right. the victims are. That's what that's what, what I think we should all right. be concerned about Absolutely. is that these were young children and that a legend like Joe Paterno mm -hmm. and, and that Coach McQuarrie mm -hmm. who saw this. I'm sorry, Mike Roland. McQuarrie, I'm, little, the grad assistant, I, I'm right. five foot two in stature on a good table, but I would have tackled him had I seen that in the shower. And I would think most of us would have done something immediately to stop the physical danger of the child. I, I, and look, I'm with you. But with you know what? But you, Sophia, you're absolutely 1,000% correct. But being from Pennsylvania and, and growing up at or near Penn State, and I hate to say this, football and Joe Pa oh, is it's that. it's a religion up there. And and I have seen and even in my own family where it is literally a civil war rhetorically between whether or not, you know, Joe Paterno did the right thing or not have done the right thing. So, you know, it's interesting to have this conversation because it's interesting to have it from afar. But being from Pennsylvania and growing up near there it is a heart-wrenching, almost well, I'm, religious I'm, I'm cultural... Sure some, I'm sure somebody in Alabama who loved Bear Bryant, mm -hmm. uh, football is king in but, Texas. But doesn't this speak to, though, when we put institutions absolutely. above an innocent child? We saw that well, with the Catholic here's, Church. Here's, absolutely. absolutely. Well, in, in, I went to a University of Richmond, a very small school. We had a football program. I played in that program. We had a similar scandal, not quite as horrific on that scale. But what was interesting about that whole thing is that there were people who were inside the institution. I was one of them, but I did not necessarily agree with this, who felt that the institution needed to be protected right. despite law breaking. Right. That there were people who were willing to do some things to sort of make this case go away, even though there was an innocent victim and even though we were at a program that nobody cared about. We certainly didn't have anywhere near the budget that Penn State had. We certainly didn't have anywhere near the recognition, but a culture develops around these and, sorts and, of things. And I want people here to, to understand that this is not just football. We see this in police departments. Mm -hmm. We see this in people Church, who are insular and protective of institutions. Right. But what is going to be the lesson going forward for these parents who, I mean, I'm sorry guys, there is no way in hell my child is going to be sleeping in a room with a coach. I agree. I'm sorry. So you got parents out there who are so trusting. Hey, take my kid. Take my kid. Right. right. Well, we were talking well, about I, I was talking to this brother yes. earlier about the fact that I remember when I was a track coach uh, in the inner city. And I remember I was actually shocked at how many parents were just happy that their son had a role model and didn't properly vet right. to see. I could right. have been R. Kelly up in that mug. You know, I could have been doing anything. <laughs> you know, I think, it is, I think it's desperation. I think, I think a lot of parents out there are so desperate to have a role model in their kids' life. Right. Particularly, particularly, ex exactly. Particularly mm -hmm. if there is.
isn't anyone in their life, so they're, I guess they're blinded, unfortunately, well, and, to, right. to the... Uh, to, and parents need to be and, educated. Absolutely. Well, right. Well, 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 and just also very quickly, this also speaks a lot to the economic pressure that we're under now. Single parent households, parents where parents, or households where parents have to work long hours, their children don't necessarily get the kind of caretaking and the kind of interaction, the kind of activity that we had when maybe perhaps some of us who were growing up in the 60s and 70s did. And I got to say it again, this is also what happens when you have fathers who are not there in the lives of children and we're trying to find some replacements for them when daddy should be handling his business.